Okay, right. So insyaAllah hari ini kita try to uh, finish up lah. Right, so yang ni last sekali right, before we are going to have our test next week insyaAllah. Okay, right. So students uh, at the end of this lesson, okay, you should be aware of uh, the general practices okay, that is applied on the precast concrete construction. Okay, and also you should understand okay, the proper handling of precast concrete structures. Right, okay, so as what we have already uh, learned okay, previously on the precast concrete system, right, so we know that precision is very important okay, in view of the uh, apa ni, uh, precast concrete construction, right? Okay, so uh, therefore, usually we are going to require skill workers lah, okay, to handle this uh, precast concrete components, right? So these are the general considerations, okay, in the handling of precast concrete structure, right? Okay, so critical jointing and details, key okay, materials and method, critical dimensions, key okay, allowing for manufacturing and site allowances. Temporary fixing or propping, okay, as well as rules for advancing the construction ahead, right? So these are the things that we have to look into, right? Okay, so uh, in the uh, design process, okay, we are going to look uh, basically into the uh, joints and also connections details, right? Okay, so which are basically uh, we are going to look uh, up into the designs, lah, right? So kita nak guna join yang jenis yang mana. Right, okay, so for example, if we are using the pin jointed connections, right, okay, so therefore we have a certain requirement okay, that we have to follow in order to design the joints. Okay, and then in terms of the dimension, right, so this is very critical. Okay, when we talk about precast concrete, right, so we have to ensure that each element okay, that we uh, up in the, uh, we construct okay, in the site, okay, and also uh, up in the, uh, during the manufacturing process in the factory, right? So it has to be of a high precision, right? Okay, so that it could be erected properly on site. So erected properly on site ni maksudnya kita boleh pasang lah, right? Okay, so the dimension has to be correct. Okay, kalau tak betul, then bila kita bawa pergi site, then dia tak match okay, dengan kita punya structure, okay? So then temporary free, uh, fixing and propping, right? So this are basically dia punya uh, supporting element. Right, okay, so support elements, okay, macam mana kita nak tahan, macam mana kita nak pegang kita punya uh, structure dulu, okay, before uh, it is, uh, apa ni, uh, permanently uh, apa, connected, right, okay, so uh, these are the support elements that we are going to look as well, right, okay, so rules for advancing uh, construction ahead, right, so this is basically uh, if we have multiple stories, right, okay, so therefore there are rules that we have to follow in order to uh, proceed okay, with the next uh, step okay, of the construction, right, okay, so these are the considerations that we have to take in the precast concrete construction, okay, right, so then in precast uh, construction as well, right, so we always require regular checking, right, so sentiasa kena buat checking, okay, throughout the uh, open the construction process okay in order to ensure that the components are handled correctly in the factory or on site right okay so it is to prevent cracking okay avoid any spalling and also avoid any premature debonding right so it may require additional reinforcement okay to satisfy lifting and pitching criteria right okay so we always have to uh, do a regular checking okay, especially on the precast concrete component in order to ensure that it does not fail before it is erected on site right so sebelum dia pasang tu okay, we do not want any failure to happen on the structure right so tak naklah dia ada crack ataupun ada spalling okay, ataupun chipping of uh, the uh, apa ni uh, precast concrete component okay belum pasang lagi belum jadi structure lagi baru uh, apa kita angkat dan juga apa uh, transported on site right so then kita store tapi dekat situ pun dah fail right so we do not want that to happen in the precast concrete construction 
Okay. Right. So yang ni apa pula ni? Okay. So yang ni adalah early lifting strength. Right. So basically precast components should be capable to support their own weight within 18 to 24 hours. Right. Okay. So the uh, strength okay, should be about 20 to 25 MPA. Right. Okay. So why do we uh, require this early uh, early strength? Okay. It is usually for storing. Okay. And uh, also transporting of the uh, component. Right. So maksudnya kita nak stack. Right. So bila sebut storing tu maksudnya kita nak stack lah. Right. So as uh, apa the video that we have watched previously. Right. So katalah kita design for a holocaust lab. Right. So after one day. Okay, when the Holocaust lab uh, has already set, right, so dia dah keras dah, it has already hardened, okay, then it will be transported to the storing area, right. So it is not that they biar dekat situ for 28 days, lama dekat situ tak, right. So it will be uh, apa, moved, okay, or transported from the mall, okay, to the storing area, right. So therefore, that particular apricast component itself has to have the ability to sustain the transportation process right so boleh angkat so that it could have apa ni dia punya enough load lah case okay, uh, enough load lah enough strength okay so that it could be transported right okay so that is why for a precast concrete structure okay it is required okay to have uh, the early strength right okay so kalau kita tengok in normal concrete Okay, usually 20 to 25 MPA is reached after 28 days, right? So, however, for a precast concrete, the concrete has to be designed, okay, so that within uh, 12 to 24 hours, okay, it could reach up to this uh, strength, right? So, kena buatlah adjustment, okay, in terms of the punya design, okay, of the concrete, okay, macam mana kita nak atur concrete, apa ni, nak uh, dapatkan early strength of the concrete, right? So, we can make adjustments in terms of the uh, type of cement as well, right? Okay. Sorry eh, anak saya ni. Ha. Saya pun kat rumah pasal dekat office pun uh, saya punya apa uh, wifi dekat office tak berapa kuat. Semalam pun uh, apa my class tu end up saya bagi recording dia pasal uh, apa uh, wifi tak boleh nak connect, right? So hari ni saya online daripada rumah je dulu, okay? Right? So that dia punya internet tu stable lah kan. Okay, alright. So another one, okay, another um, apa method, okay, that we can do in order to achieve uh, this high early strength, okay, is to use advanced curing technique, okay, which is to accelerate the strength development, okay, and usually we are using the steam curing all right so as for the video that we have watched previously on the uh, apa uh, pre stress um, double t uh, beam right so yang precast pre stress double t beam right so it is using the steam curing right so memang biasanya kita guna steam curing so that uh, the strength key okay, of the concrete key okay, can be uh, apa ni uh, obtain key okay, earlier key okay, in comparison to the normal air key right <coughs> Okay, so, nak uh, tengok yang picture dekat sini ni. So, this is the construction of a, uh, apa ni, holocaust lab, right? So, bila holocaust lab, right? So, kita boleh nampak lah dia keluarkan daripada dia punya mold, right? So, this are the mold, okay? And then, it is transported to the storing area, right? Okay, so that is why we require this high early strength, okay? Alright, so this is in view uh, of uh, the handling, okay, of uh, the... Uh, segments, right? Okay, so this is what we are going to learn uh, in this topic, right? Okay, so this, it is basically how to handle the components, right? So we have various types of uh, component shape, right? So dia punya uh, rupa bentuk dia tu ada macam-macam lah, right? Okay, so therefore, okay, we need to consider, okay, how are we going to place the uh, slings, right? So sling ni adalah dia punya tali itulah. So macam mana kita nak ikat okay, kepada kita punya komponen and how will it be lifted up, right? Okay, so we are going to look into uh, the possible cracking, right? So maksudnya uh, apa ni positions lah, okay, uh, where it might crack, okay, and then it also in view of the deflection, right? So we wanted to reduce the uh, risk of deflection, okay, from our structure, right? Okay, so yang ni dia baru lifting. Kita belum lagi install, 
Right, okay, so if we have a wrong lifting criteria, okay, ataupun a wrong lifting method, so what happens to our structure is that it will fail, right? Ataupun dia akan crack, belum lagi letak dekat uh, the, the final position, okay, baru angkat je dia dah uh, deflect, right? So we do not want that to happen, right? Okay, so these are the things that we are going to look into in this topic, okay? Right, so... Uh, Another thing, okay, yang tadi kita mention, okay, in this subject, uh, in this topic also, we are going to look into the uh, temporary supports and fixing, okay, that we are going to uh, use, okay, in the precast concrete structure, right? Okay, so this is one example, okay, for a non-symmetrical, uh, apa ni, eh, for uh, the loadings of slabs on beams, right? Okay, so this is also another, uh, another example where as we are going to require supports, right, which are also known as the temporary support, right. So, kenapa dia sebut temporary support? Okay, pasal uh, during construction sahaja yang kita akan guna support ni, right. So, kita letak je dulu, okay, sementara kita nak uh, apa ni, finish up, okay, the arrangement of the uh, precast components key okay, on our final structure right so temporary so dia letak sementara dekat situ uh, we have the support key okay, and then uh, dah habis dah kita dah pasang dah semua then we are going to remove this support okay right so this is one example okay in a partially completed structure so bila partially completed structure ni dia baru pasang some parts key okay, then another parts tu tak ada lagi right so uh, for example, we have a non-symmetrical loadings of slabs on beams. Okay, beware of the load path on the partially completed structure. Right, okay, so we know that in a precast concrete structure, we have to look into the load distribution as a whole. Tengok keseluruhan dia, okay, how are we going to distribute all the loads on top of the uh, structure? So, this is one example when the floor slab is placed on one side of the beam. Okay, so dia punya final design, okay, is that floor slab tu sepatutnya ada dua-dua belah. Right, okay, so if we zoom into this figure, right, so yang ni contohlah. Right, okay, so this is our beam. Okay, then kita ada kat sini slab. Right, eh, Allah, so benar pula tu saya slab. Okay, tak apalah. Right, so this is the slab. Okay, and as for this beam, okay, it is supposed to be supporting the slab on both sides. Dua-dua arah. Tapi kat sini ada satu je slab dulu. Okay, but on the other side, dekat this side, okay, belum ada lagi slab. Bukan tak ada, sepatutnya ada. Tapi kita akan letak kemudian, right? So, it is supposed to be uh, put there. Okay, however, in this construction, okay, only one side has already been uh, erected. Okay, right? So, in this case, okay, it will induce torsion to the beam, right? So, which is this beam lah, okay, which is the supporting beam. So, dia pegang. Jadi, bila slab tu sepatutnya ada dua-dua side, tapi dia ada sebelah je, what happens is that there is a tendency for this beam to be twisted, right? Okay, so you have already learned about torsion previously in your RC design. Dah pernah belajar dah dulu, jadi torsion ni, dia adalah, uh, it is, uh, apa ni, uh, dia macam twisting lah, right? So, twisting of the beam, right? So, to avoid this, Okay, because we wanted to avoid the damage to the connection, right? So, we do not want, when we have this twisting, okay, what happens is that it will tend to damage, Allah tak nampak pula dia punya color pen ni, right? So, it tend to damage <coughs> the connection. Okay, so connection between beam to beam and also connection between the beam to the column, right? So, we do not want any damage to happen. Nanti. Okay, ah, sekejap anak saya tanya seluar pula. Okay, alright, so it might damage the connection, alright. So, kalau dia twisted, what happens? Ah, dia ada pemegang dia kan, macam dia punya lock dekat hujung tu. Then, kalau kita punya beam tu is ah uh, twisted, alright. So, what happens is that the connection will be damaged, right? So, to avoid this, what we are going to do is to provide the temporary propping. Right, so temporary propping ni maksudnya kita akan provide supports, okay, at the bottom of the beam, right? So, it is uh, required, okay, this temporary propping is required, okay, before the slab is properly placed at both sides, right? So, dia temporary je, so kita akan letak sementara je, okay, sementara kita punya slab yang lagi sebelah tu kita akan 
uh, erect, okay, ataupun install. Right, okay, so this is what we meant okay, by uh, having this temporary support, right? So this is one of the uh, requirements lah, right? Okay, so which is in order to uh, maintain, okay, dia punya uh, load uh, distribution, right? So we do not want to change the load distribution pattern, okay? So therefore, we are going to require this temporary propping, right? Okay, so these are the things that we have to look into when we are designing or constructing a precast concrete component, right? Okay, so walaupun dia nampak macam sama je dengan RC, RC uh, penikas in situ RC design, okay, however, these are the things, okay, these are the uh, apa ni, details, okay, that we have to uh, pay attention on, okay, when we are uh, looking into uh, the uh, design of precast, okay? Right, so yang ni apa ni, practical connection and joints are very important, right? So yang ni kita dah discuss dah on joints and connections. So it must satisfy, okay, um, the ultimate design loads in a ductile manner, okay? So it has to be uh, manufactured economically and be erected safely and speedily, okay? Manufacturing and site erection tolerances do not adversely affect Okay, the intended structure behavior, okay, and also the final appearance of the joint must satisfy the visual, fire, and environmental requirements, okay. Right, so yang tu kita dah discuss lah previously on the connections, right. So apa yang kita kena uh, take care, okay, in order to design a, a good connection, okay, for a precast concrete structure, okay. Then yang ni pula adalah uh, practical design at connections, right, so sufficient a uh, white bearing is required right whereas it needs some tolerances or construction allowance right okay so this is also in terms of design okay walaupun kita kata uh, it has to be precise okay however we are going to require this uh, tolerances okay and also this allowance right so maksudnya kena ada ruang extra lah sikit okay however okay but too much of tolerance will induce unnecessary loading okay such as torsion Right, okay, so bila kita nak fit in, right, so we have to ensure that we have enough uh, tolerance, okay, so that it could fit in, right, okay, so kita tahu kalau kata dia punya size tu betul-betul sama, uh, then dia tak boleh masuk, uh, so dia punya the structure that is receiving the, uh, apa ni, precast concrete component, okay, as well as the precast con concrete component itself, okay, katalah beam kita nak connect kepada column, right, okay, so therefore, both dimensions has to have its tolerance, okay. Berapa banyak tolerance yang kita kena provide dekat situ, okay. Right, so yang ni adalah in terms of the tolerance, okay, so practical design at connections, okay, so seating capacity need to uh, consider the cumulative effects of tolerance, shrinkage and movement from uh, construction damage. Okay, so allow tolerance at least uh, at one end of the element, then avoid designing components or connections key okay, based on only accumulative dimensions without any tolerances, right? Okay, so kena ada tolerance lah, right? So what is shown in this figure uh, down here, okay, are the problems that might occur on site, right? Okay, so uh, yang ni ada satu uh, masalah ni di sini, okay, gap is too large, right? Okay, so maksudnya kita punya, uh, as for this one, is the connection between beam to beam. So, yang ni beam, which is supported. Then, this is also another beam, okay, which is the supporting beam, right? Okay, so, uh, we have the uh, beam punya seating dekat bawah ni, right? So, tempat letak dia lah, basically. Okay, so, uh, this is the position that uh, our uh, supported beam supposed to be, right? Okay, however, the beam that we wanted to place on top of uh, the supporting beam, okay, is shorter, Right, so mungkin dia pendek sangat. Jadi bila dia pendek, what happens is that we are going to have a very large uh, gap. Right, so jarak dia sang sangat besar kat situ, so ada kosong. Right, okay, so that is an opportunity for movement to happen. Okay, pasal instead of uh, we have uh, the, uh, apa, that particular dimension of the seating, okay, tapi kita punya beam tu duduk kat hujung je. Right, so sepatutnya dia duduk belakang sikit. Right, so that it could be properly supported. Okay, however, it is put uh, at the end of the beam. Right, okay, so what happened okay, is that that is an opportunity for movement okay, which could cause slippage of this uh, structure. Right, okay, so this is very uh, dangerous 
okay sebenarnya right key because it could uh, apa lead to uh, failure right okay then kita ada apa lagi we have spalling in both units right okay so bila duduk hujung tu there is a possibility for spalling to happen as well okay and then as for uh, the design okay or the construction of the apa ni precast concrete supporting beam Right, okay, so we can see that the cover is too large. Okay, so reinforcement dia sepatutnya dia sampai ke uh, depan lagi sikit. Right, okay, however, okay, due to the construction punya problem, okay, what happens is that we have a very large cover. So, bila cover dia besar and we are putting the beam on top of this, okay, so it will not be supporting the uh, apa ni, beam fully. Right, okay, so therefore we are going to have spalling within this corner right so dekat hujung ni uh, kita akan ada masalah spalling lah right okay because it is only concrete okay without any reinforcements okay right so then bar radius is too large so yang ni pun sama masalah in terms of the uh, apa ni uh, construction of the element itself right okay so yang ni pula this is one example so problem one clear distance is too great or the beam is too short right so yang ni pun in terms of the distances right okay so we have to ensure Okay, that dia punya distance tu kena be, be accurate okay, between column to column. Okay, when we are placing or installing this uh, components, right? So, it has to be accurately placed, right? Okay, so that dia tak adalah terlalu jauh. Lepas tu, tiba-tiba beam yang kita nak uh, bawa dan install tu pendek daripada that uh, distance, right? Okay, so uh, it is not uh, apa ni, acceptable lah okay, to do that. Okay, takkan kita nak tiba-tiba dekat site nak panjangkan pula kita punya beam, right? So, it has to be precise. Okay, right? So, clear distance is too great or the beam is too short, right? Then pro problem two, inadequ uh, inadequate bearing initially, right? Okay, so yang ni adalah in terms of dia punya support lah, right? So, bila dia support bearing, okay, it is more on the support. And problem three, Column sway due to eccentric loading or due to crane accident, right? So, dia ada, uh, apa ni, column tu mungkin dia move, right? Okay, then, uh, problem for beam not adequate, uh, adequately or not at all tied to the column, <coughs> right? So, sepatutnya beam tu, okay, it has to be properly supported, right? Okay, so these are the things that we have to look into and take into consideration, okay, when we are designing a, uh, apa ni, uh, precast concrete structure, okay, as well as the handling of these components on site, right, so tak boleh lah kita kata, okay, dah siap dah semua component, uh, so senang je lah bila kita bawa ke site, right, okay, so these are the things okay, that we need to look into in terms of the uh, construction process, right, okay, so sebelum ni kita tengok in terms of the design, okay, so yang ni pula untuk hari ni kita tengok dia in terms of the construction process. Okay, how precise we should be and what are the things that we have to look, uh, we have to take into consideration. Okay, right. <coughs> then, apa lagi ni? So, yang ni pula cast in fixings and lifting devices. Right, okay, so this is basically bila dia sebut fixings and lifting devices, macam mana kita nak angkat. Right, so how uh, the slings, right, so sling tu dia punya tali itulah, right, will be connected to our uh, structure, right? So, cast in fixings, okay, it can be threaded sockets, lifting loops, anchors, and etc. It is according to the manufacturer's instructions, okay, the edge distances, depth of embedment, uh, encourage reinforcement, and concrete strength, right? So, bila dia sebut pasal cast in fixings, it is uh, referring to this. Mana gambar saya nak tunjuk? Okay, yang ni, lebih kurang macam ni lah, right? Okay, so hooks ni, ataupun anchors ni, Okay, so this is known as the cast in fixings, right? Okay, so dia ada hook lah kalau kata macam yang ni, dia ada hook yang dia buat di dalam kita punya uh, segment, right? Okay, so that the section can be lifted up safely, right? Okay, so yang ni untuk slab, ah, yang ni pun ada, ha, yang ni bolted socket, right? So dia dah ada dah socket dia siap-siap so that we can... Uh, apa ni, uh, fit in the shackle tu, shackle untuk kita uh, angkat tu, right, okay, so uh, we can fit that in, okay, so that it could be lifted up properly, right, so these are the ones that is known as the cast in fixings, right, so itu yang dia kata, it is up to the manufacturers punya, uh, apa ni, specifications, okay, because they are going to 
uh, determine okay, which uh, apa, part of uh, which apa, type of uh, cast in fixings that they are going to use okay, for their components. Okay. Right, so those are the uh, cast in fixings. Lah. So we tengok tadi cast in fixings then lifting system. Right, so lifting system ni yang kita akan tengok okay, based on uh, the type of structures. Okay, so kita ada vertical structure and we also have uh, horizontal structures. Right, so horizontal structures such as beams, okay, slabs. Okay, then kita ada columns. So columns are vertical structures. Okay, so the method of lifting okay, is different okay, in comparison to this components. Okay, right, so lifting systems, it is designed according to their intended use and mode of lifting, right? So for example, we have tilting, uh, flat, vertical, lifting angle, element dimensions, and etc. Right, okay, so kita akan tengoklah intended use dia macam mana. Kalau kata untuk beam, okay, which is a horizontal component, okay, therefore the lifting process will be horizontal as well. Right, so kita akan angkat dia pun horizontal. Okay, so that it could be fitted in okay, horizontally. Right, so uh, tak naklah bila kita design uh, untuk column for example, uh, then tiba-tiba uh, column tu kita angkat dia horizontal, then kita nak make it vertical. Right, okay, so the uh, method okay, to lift up this uh, components will be based on the orientation of the component itself okay, in the final structure. Okay, so kita tengok kat sini, the lifting points, right? So this is the first one that we are going to look into, okay, in view of the lifting of beams. Okay, macam mana nak angkat beam, right? So we wanted to minimize deflections, okay? So tak nak, uh, they deflect too much, okay, during the uh, lifting process. Right, where the lifting point is usually at 0.25 L or 0.17 L. Okay, from the ends. Okay, so yang ni adalah dia punya dimension lah. So approximately, uh, apa ni, uh, within this range of the uh, <coughs> dimension. Right, okay, so therefore as for this type of uh, lifting, okay, we can use slings without spreader beams okay, in thicker sections. Okay, so kalau kita punya beam tu agak uh, thick, okay, dia agak tebal, okay, therefore the uh, possibility for deflection will be lower, right? So thicker beams and also shorter beams, right? Okay, so therefore we could use slings without spreader beams, right? So maksudnya kita boleh uh, sangkutkan kita punya sling ni, okay, kepada hooks, okay, which is the cast in fixing in the beam, right? Then dia boleh lift up lah. Right, so that is for thicker beam. So these are the examples. So kita ada two point lifting for precast beams okay, without the spreader beam. So nanti kita akan tengok lah apa yang dimaksudkan dengan spreader beam. So yang ni adalah uh, for beams okay, that is not prone to uh, deflection okay, during the lifting. Right? Okay, so ada example dia. So kat sini kita ada two point jugalah. Right? So this is the fixings. Okay? Right? So similarly for this figure. Yang ni pun sama. Kita ada hook dekat ujung ni. Right. Then yang ni pula two point lifting. Okay. For precast slab with clamp. Right. Okay. So yang ni pula bila dia nak angkat slab. So slab is a apa ni wider um, apa element. Right. Okay. So therefore this is one example which is using the clamp. Right. So then dia pegang. Right. In order to uh, apa ni lift up. Okay. The uh, slap horizontally, right? So, bila dia angkat pun dia akan angkat horizontal lah okay, because it will be uh, apa ni uh, install uh, horizontally. Okay, right? So, yang ni pula untuk thinner beams, right? So, thinner beams maksudnya dia beam yang lebih slender, right? Okay, so for thinner beams, usually we are going to use the additional steel spreader. Yang tadi sling tu tetap sama, okay, tapi kita akan ada steel spreader in the middle. Right? So the reason why we require this steel spreader, okay, it is in order to reduce the possible deflection during lifting. Right? Okay, so kita ada dia punya sling, okay, adjustable length steel chains which, uh, which is called as slings. Right? So we have these slings and also we have this steel spreader beam. Right, so spreader beam ni akan pegang lah. Okay, so that it will not have a, a great moment okay, at the uh, apa ni, hooks okay, dekat hujung tu. Okay, so therefore we are going to require this if we are dealing with thinner or slender beams. 
Okay, right. So, uh, ataupun kita boleh juga guna four point lifting. Okay, especially for very long section, okay, which is more than 13 meters. Right, so a wider section, okay, which is more than 750 millimeters. Right, whereas the slender section with L over D of approximately 50 to 55. Right, so these are the uh, other alternative met methods okay, that we can use. Okay, right, so either we use uh, one spreader beam. Right, so yang ni untuk four point lifting lah. Yang tadi ni dekat atas ni adalah two point lifting. Right, jap saya tulis jap. Yang ni adalah two point. Uh, tapi yang bawah ni gambar yang kita tengok ni adalah four point lifting. Right, so kita ada dua option. Okay, we have two options of uh, apa ni uh, four point lifting. Okay, so either we are using one spreader beam. So kalau one spreader beam, uh, saya lukis separately lah kat sini. Uh, dia bukan combination sebenarnya. Okay, right. So, ada satu je spreader beam. Okay, and then we are going to have four points, okay, to lift up our beam. Okay, so this is one example. Okay, ha, yang ni pakai satu spreader beam sahaja. One spreader, eh, salah je pula. Spreader yeah. beam. Okay, then another one, okay, is using two layers of spreader beam. Kalau yang two layers of spreader beam, beam ni, uh, basically uh, saya ambil je daripada yang gambar sebelah ni uh, cuma saya separate dia je alright, okay, so kita ada one spreader beam on top here wah, tengit pula, okay, and then we are going to have another spreader beam at the bottom here right, so ada spreader beam kat sini uh, then dia open kat sini Allah, tak cantik now look eh, boleh lah kan <coughs> right, okay, and then this is connected to the beam, okay Right, so as for this one, okay, we are using two spreader beams, right, two spreader beams. Okay, so satu spreader beam here, okay, and then another layer of spreader beam at the bottom here. Okay, or we can also use this part, uh, this type, okay, whereas we only have one spreader beam, right. Okay, so yang ni adalah option ni lah. Okay, if we are dealing with slender beams. Okay, so any questions for the moment? Boleh? Kau dah tidur dah pagi-pagi ni? Boleh ke? Any questions? Boleh, boleh. Boleh lah. Irfan seorang je bunyi. Yang lain tu mana dah? Ha, dia ber, bertumbuh selumus dua tiga hari ni buat FYP Hari ni tidur eh Sambil-sambil dengar saya punya kelas bolehlah tutup mata ke sana Okay, right. okay. so this is very important right? So nanti dalam your uh, mini project pun Rasanya last question kot ada uh, apa ni Some parts on the uh, handling okay, Ataupun problems during construction ke apa Saya pun tak ingat yang mini project tu kan right? So nanti dalam test pun akan masuk sampai ke sini lah Right, okay, so our test, please be reminded that our test will be next week. Right, so kita ada uh, apa, uh, test two on uh, Friday. Right, okay, so make sure uh, study lah. Okay, so that will be our uh, final assessment. Right, so kita punya subjek ni tak ada final exam. Right, okay, so kita punya final exam, uh, final uh, aside, apa ni, eh, sasu pula cakapnya, final assessment. Okay, will be our uh, final test lah, okay, which is test 2. So, next week lah, right? So, kita dah settle with test, uh, eh, with quizzes, right? So, quiz dah settle 2. Uh, kita punya test 1 pun dah settle, right? So, tinggal mini project sahaja, okay, for you to come and see me, okay? So, basically mini project tu bukanlah nak present uh, macam mana pun. Dia lebih kepada, tunjuk kepada saya, Uh, apa ni uh, kalau ada apa-apa corrections okay, that I need to comment okay, uh, on your work okay, so I will comment okay, so that you that you can uh, apa uh, improve okay, and before your final submission right so bila final submission tu I suppose sepatutnya dia punya uh, apa uh, mini project tu dah complete lah right okay, so maksudnya tak adalah ada benda-benda yang lagi tertinggal okay, so that you can maximize the marks okay right So, four point lifting uh, for pre lab. So, this is the example. Okay, right. So, tadi kita cerita pasal four point lifting and also 
uh, apa ni uh, two point lifting, right? Okay, so uh, those lifting process can be used for slabs and also it can be used for beams as well. Afik, kenapa main tu? Okay, alright. Okay, so two point lifting for precast slab with spreader beam and clamps, right? So yang ni pun dia guna spreader beam okay, because slabs are also uh, very uh, slender, right? So they need pace, okay? So therefore, uh, sometimes, okay, we also opt for uh, spreader beams as well, right? So uh, in order to avoid, okay, from any deflection to happen on the uh, component, right? So yang ni dia pakai clamp, right? So clamp lah dia pegang kita punya slab. Right, okay, so this is another option, okay, walaupun dia tak ada cast in fixings, maksudnya dia tak ada hook, okay, on the slab, okay, uh, especially on a hollow core slab. So, bila hollow core slab, kadang dia tak ada hook pun, kalau kita tengok zoom in uh, for this picture, right, so kita tak nampak pun dia ada hook, right, so bila dia tak ada hook, therefore, bila nak angkat dia, right, so either we can use the uh, sling, okay, directly, or we can use the spreader beam, okay. Right, so ha, yang ni lah macam yang ni in this case, okay, which is the special case where as for a hollow cost lab, due to the fabrication process, uh, extrusion or slip forming, okay, hence it does not facilitate for lifting hooks, okay, but it can manually, we can manually insert the hook or pin, right, so sama ada buat, uh, masukkan juga, okay, after it is already constructed or we can also use the spreader beam and also the clamp, right, okay, so yang Uh, paling biasa digunakan adalah using these clamps lah, right? Okay, so the clamp pegang dia punya tepi dia, okay, because we have the here key, okay, at the end of our, um, apa ni, uh, a hollow cost slab, right? Okay, so therefore we can actually uh, clamp, okay, the ends of our section, okay? Right, so angkat yang tu, uh, then it could be put it up. Okay, so this is one uh, example of a problem, okay, that might happen if we are using this Uh, slings, okay, to lift it up, right, okay, so uh, as for this, okay, kita ada uh, dia macam uh, hollow section lah in the middle here, right, okay, macam U section, right, so there is a possibility of cracking, okay, to happen within this area, right, okay, so if we are using the slings, okay, guna sling macam tu je, then kita lift up, so there is a possibility to Uh, for the crack to happen within this critical area. Because it's sangat kecil kat sini dan juga kat atas tu kita tak ada apa-apa uh, concrete, right? Okay, so in this case, okay, what we can actually do here is that we can provide the spreader beam, right? So, pro boleh provide kat spreader beam dekat atas ni, right? So that it could sustain and reduce, okay, the uh, apa ni, uh, loading, okay, that will be subjected at the ends of this slab. Right, okay, so this is one example, okay, of uh, having this, uh, apa ni, apa nama dia, uh, spreader beam, okay, in order to avoid any cracking or failure to happen on our uh, component, okay, right, so yang ni adalah example dia lah kenapa kita pakai spreader beam, right, so for uh, four point lifting, okay, for precast hollow cost slab, Right, okay, so yang ni dia pakai hooks, right, so kita ada hook dekat sini dan dia guna four point lifting, so four point lifting maksudnya ada empat point lah, okay, yang connected to the slab, okay, then it is uh, apa ni, lifted up, okay, to be uh, installed, okay, on the uh, exact location, right, so yang ni pula adalah hoisting of double T, Right, so it can also be using this uh, four point lift, uh, four uh, lifting points, right? So biasanya untuk hollow cost, uh, hollow core pula. Untuk double T slab, usually we are going to have the hooks, right? So yang ni kita ada hook, okay, and uh, as for a uh, double T slab, so it is usually of a very long span, right? So therefore we are going to require at least four lifting points, right? So to maintain the punya stability of the structure during the erection of the uh, apa ni double T slab. <coughs> okay, right. So, yang ni pula untuk lifting uh, for U or L shape segment. Right. Okay, so uh, if we are using a plain uh, sling, right. So, kalau guna sling macam ini je pun, okay, that is a possibility of flexural crack to happen in the outside pieces. Okay, pasal bila sling tu macam tu, then we are going to have Uh, a great forces, okay, which is in this direction, right? So, to avoid this, okay, so therefore we can also provide this spreader 
beam, right? Okay, so bila ada spreader beam, so basically kita akan pegang lah, right? And the spreader beam could uh, adjust, okay, uh, dia punya deflection, right? So deflection dia akan uh, kurang lah, okay, in comparison to if it is connected directly without any spreader beam, right? So these are also other examples, okay? So instead of kalau kata tak guna spreader beam, then boleh guna four point lifting, right? So this is four point lifting. Eh, terus point. Okay, four point lifting. Right, so four point lifting ada empat hook. Then dia akan angkat lah. Right, so this is another one. Okay, so yang ni kalau kata kita ambil uh, dia belah, uh, belakang dia lah. Right, okay, so yang ni dia bukan drainage yang bawah lah. Dia macam dia punya penutup dia dekat atas tu. Right, okay, so therefore we are going to have four uh, point lifting. Right, okay, so this is also possible. Okay, right, so those are for the lifting of horizontal components. Okay, so yang ni pula adalah lifting of vertical components. Okay, so kita ada single point pitching or double point pitching, right? So bila sebut pitching ni maksudnya kita angkat uh, apa ni, our precast components vertically, right? Okay, so we have single point pitching, okay, whereas we have the maximum vertical deflection for uh, 12 meters long. Okay, so uh, this is one example okay, which is shown in the figure. Right, so bila dia sebut one point, uh, single point pitching, okay, it means that we are going to just have one point okay, of the uh, lifting uh, process. Okay, then another one is for the double point pitching, okay, whereas we are going to have slings, okay, that could slide to alter the length as the pitching proceeds. Right, so dia pegang dekat dua tempat, right? So as you can see here, okay, so this is for the uh, single pitching, right? Okay, so bila sebelum dia angkat, okay, then we are going to lift it up. Okay, then this one, it is using the uh, double, apa ni, uh, pitching, right? Okay, whereas we have two points, right? So bila dia angkat, okay, it will be much uh, stable, okay, and then it will be, uh, apa ni, uh, installed. Okay, in the uh, expected location lah. Okay, right. So handling and lift, uh, handling, lifting and pitching of precast columns. So this is the example. So you boleh uh, Google through, right. So tengok dekat YouTube ada, uh, dia tunjuk lah uh, pitching of precast columns. Right, so it is shown step by step. Okay, macam mana dia angkat. Right, so and it will be lifted up vertically. Right, so memang angkat terus vertical. Okay, daripada... Uh, apa ni, the horizontal position, okay, and then it will be lifted up on uh, the uh, correct location lah, right? Okay, so yang ni adalah a few of the examples lah, okay, how uh, the uh, columns, okay, are being uh, installed, okay? Right, okay, so the next one is the staircase, right? Okay, so we know that a staircase is a, um, dia panggil apa eh? Uh, is oriented, uh, orientated as um, uh, apa ni, apa ni perkataan dia tu, uh, slanting, right? So, it is diagonal. Okay, instead of the uh, horizontal ataupun uh, vertical, right? So, it is diagonal, right? Okay, so therefore, okay, as for this, okay, it is also using this, uh, apa ni, uh, two point, okay, punya uh, lifting, right? Okay, whereas we are going to have the short sling, and also the long sling, right? So short sling too will be on top of the slab, eh, of the, uh, apa ni, uh, of the staircase, okay? And then the long sling will be at the bottom, right? So this is the example. So bila dia lift up pun, in terms of this uh, staircase, okay, it will also be lifted up diagonally, right? So pasal dia memang singit macam tu, jadi bila kita nak install, okay, we are going to install this component diagonally as well, right? So, tak naklah kita lift up the horizontally. Lepas tu, bila bawa dekat side, uh, then it will be hard for us to adjust the, uh, apa ni lah, dia punya orientation, right? Okay, so, the orientation has to, uh, the, lifting, the lifting process has to follow the uh, orientation of the component, right? So, macam mana kita nak letak? Okay, so yang ni pula untuk walls. So, walls are also vertical components. So, bila vertical component, then kita akan angkat walls ni pun vertically. Right, okay, so that it could be directly installed. Right, so these are uh, examples okay, of possible rigging configurations okay, for lifting. 
Right? So, uh, yang ni adalah untuk um, apa ni? Yang ni untuk walls lah. Right? So, yang ni you can also uh, apa ni? Google to uh, this website. Right? So, WorkSafe uh, apa New Zealand ni. Right? So, it is not Malaysian punya uh, standard lah. So, yang ni adalah New Zealand punya uh, dia WorkSafe uh, apa yang nak kata guideline okay, for precast concrete construction. Right, so boleh tengok dekat situ, okay, we have details okay, sebenarnya they describe okay, how uh, apa ni, uh, the lifting procedures okay, could be uh, applied okay, especially for the uh, apa ni, uh, components uh, in particular. Right, okay, so dia ada options dia lah nak guna macam mana, right, what are the precautions that we have to take and so on. Right, okay, so boleh google through, okay, then you will be able to download dia punya uh, PDF lah. Right, okay, which is showing the details okay, on the site preparations and so on. Okay, if you are interested lah untuk precast concrete component. Okay, right, so any questions so far? Tak push me lah. Tengok berapa, ada berapa slide lagi? Berarti dah cakap sebenarnya kan? Okay, oh, nanti ada video. Okay, kita break sekejap dalam 10 minit. Lepas tu kita continue boleh? Boleh, boleh, madam. Boleh, madam. Saya pun dah letih cakap. Korang pun tatas dah tertidur kan? Okay, so kita start dalam, uh, kita start pukul 9.05 minit. Okay, alright. So kita break sekejap. Saya cari air sekejap. Okay, alright. Uh, so orang, korang pun pergilah stretching, stretching ke basuh-basuh muka kejap. Dan kita, we will continue. Okay, alright.
Okey. Dah, jom kita start. Okey, ada lagi ke student saya ni? <coughs> eh, apa ni? Apa ni? Apa ni? Ada adik bersara. Oh, ada. Ada, ada. Nah, ibu nak, ibu nak kelas. <laughs> nak saya cerita. Okay, alright. So, kita sambung sikit lagi. Ha, nak bagi pahabis ni yang kita punya topik hari ni lah. Okay, alright. So, tadi kita dah tengok on the lifting procedures. Right. Okay, so yang ni kita tengok uh, yang seterusnya lah. Okay, untuk uh, handling and uh, apa ni, storing okay, of the precast components. Right. Okay, so uh, on site okay, and also in the Uh, factory, okay, we have to ensure that the uh, storing of the uh, precast components okay, uh, should be handled properly lah, right, okay, so that uh, it will not cause any uh, failures to happen, right, okay, so this is one example, okay, which is showing that if we do not have a proper uh, apa ni, arrangement okay, of the barriers okay, of our uh, structure, okay, so it will tend to have Uh, problems okay, in terms of the uh, load carrying capacity, right? Okay, so we do not want this to happen okay, before it is installed uh, or erected okay, uh, in the exact location, right? Okay, so kita tak nak lah these failures, okay? Right, so therefore, okay, uh, this is one example, okay, which is in terms of the barriers, right? So barriers ni adalah dia punya um, apa nak kata, support lah, right? Okay, bila if we wanted to stack up okay, between the components right so it has to be handled properly and usually it will be aligned uh, vertically okay uh, in order for the loads okay, to be uh, transferred okay, to the uh, soil okay right so there are uh, cases okay, that uh, we also uh, do not have this uh, storage on site right so uh, ada juga construction process so this will be depending on the procedures lah right okay, that has been decided by the engineers okay whether they are going to store okay, the uh, components on site or it will be directly installed from the uh, lorry right so it will be transported okay uh, we have the schedule okay to transport the components okay then it will be installed directly instead of kita ambil bawa pergi site uh, store dulu uh, then baru kita uh, apa ni erect Right, okay, so ada juga yang case dia directly daripada lori tu terus pasang, uh, terus angkat dengan crane, okay, and it is installed directly to the uh, final destination. Right, okay, so <coughs> this is another one which is site preparation for storage. Right, so site preparation ni is uh, more uh, on the, uh, apa ni, if we are, are going to store the precast components on site, Right, so uh, we need to have a well consolidated and level ground. Right, okay, so we do not want any settlement to happen okay, during the storage. Right, okay, so support settlement, uh, this is one problem. Okay, well, as we have support settlement, okay, that causes the flexure in the lower unit. Right, so the settlement, maksudnya dia punya tanah tu mendap. Right, okay, so what happens is that we are going to have different levels of the, uh, apa ni, uh, of the soil, right? Okay, so when we have these different levels, okay, therefore, there is a possibility for our precast components to deflect as well, right? So, they can turun. Jadi, bila dia turun, ada kemungkinan, okay, for this uh, structure, okay, to crack, okay, because we are going to have uh, other structures, okay, or, or other elements that is stacked up on top of it as well, right? So, bila dia settle, then loading yang atas tu pun nanti nak kena, dia akan transfer down lah. Right, okay, so there will be uh, any problem okay, in that case. Right, okay, then uh, support uh, settlement uh, causes only rotation, right? So uh, we do not want any settlement to happen. Okay, so therefore it has to be uh, the site okay, where we are going to put uh, the uh, this precast components. Okay, it has to be uh, well prepared. Okay, it has to be well consolidated. So well consolidated ni maksudnya dia, dia punya tanah tu dah padat lah. Right, so there is no possibility for settlement to happen any more. Right, so it has to be of a level ground. Okay, so they must rata lah. Right, so we do not want different levels okay, of uh, this ground okay, to avoid any failures to the structure during storage. Okay, so yang ni pun adalah facts yang saya ambil daripada yang tadi work safe uh, New Zealand tu. Right, so planning for safe erection of precast elements on site. So planning for safe erection of precast elements should cover 
Okay, but not limited to these uh, factors, right? So hazards, risk and control measures, work plans, um, <coughs> testing and delivery sequence, erection sequence, lifting plan, right? So lift plan ni uh, bukan lift yang kita naik turun lift elevator tu, but it is on the lifting point, uh, lifting plan, right? So how are we going to lift up our uh, components, scale well? whether we are going to use uh, four point lifting, <coughs> uh, single point lifting and so on, right? Okay, and then uh, site limitations and features, okay, such as street access, overhead obstructions, okay, particularly overhead power lines or at the, uh, or <coughs> at or the, or, or adjacent to the site, right? Okay, so these are the things that we need to look into as well, okay, which are the site limitations, okay, because uh, precast concrete construction ni tak semestinya kita buat dekat tempat yang lapang. Jadi mungkin kita buat dekat uh, where <coughs> we have other buildings as well, okay, which is nearby, right? Okay, so therefore we need to look into the site limitations, okay, so especially in terms of the street access in order to transport the uh, precast elements to the site. Right, okay, then overhead obstructions, okay, particularly overhead uh, power lines. So power lines ni adalah uh, tiang elektrik tu lah, right. So power lines tu lah dekat mana because we are going to deal with uh, cranes, okay, and also uh, multiple uh, precast components yang kita akan bawa ke, ke site, right. Okay, so therefore we have to look into this. Suspended surfaces and basements, okay, underground surfaces, right. So this is in view of the loads that will be in use, right? So, I got the heavy loads on top, okay, because we will be dealing with uh, cranes and also the heavy precast components, right? Okay, so therefore, we have to look into uh, the, uh, apa ni, uh, any underground services, okay, that might be affected, right? So, ada pipe air ke dekat bawah, pipeline, ataupun kita ada sewerage line and so on, right? Then, compaction of uh, site surface areas, Okay, so this is uh, to um, ensure a uh, well consolidated ground, right? So not only for storage, it is also for the safe erection, right? Okay, because we are going to have cranes okay, uh, that is coming in and out of the site, right? Okay, so therefore the uh, site okay, has to be properly prepared, right? Okay, then precast concrete element sizes, the crane size configurations, okay, mobility and also access as well as the working working radius of the crane. Okay, it has to be shown in a crane layout drawing, right? So, maksudnya crane tu dia akan pusing ke mana je, right? Okay, because these cranes will not be going uh, throughout the site. Okay, however, it will be <coughs> only within certain area, okay, so that it can be uh, erecting the, um, apa ni, uh, the components, the precast components. Bukanlah dia pusing keliling kan? Right, so we have to have enough space, okay, for the crane to uh, go uh, pass by, right? Okay, so that it will be, uh, there will be no problem, okay, with the other uh, construction components, right? So kita tak nak nanti storage pun duduk kat situ, crane pun nak lalu kat situ kan, right? So all this has to be uh, shown in a crane layout drawing, right? Okay, so this is very important, right? So yang ni juga adalah on-site preparation, right? So traffic control. Uh, provide safety nets, provide airbags, right? Okay, so these are examples lah, right? So especially if we are uh, dealing with sites, okay, that is of a uh, busy, uh, that has uh, busy traffic, okay, kalau kata buat macam uh, installation uh, for uh, bridges, right? Okay, so usually we are going to have uh, to uh, have this traffic control, right? Okay, so kita nak divert ke mana, okay, during the installation process and so on. Right, okay, so these are the things that we require. Okay, then services pipe and cable must be relocated, okay, to avoid loading from heavy machinery, right? So protect if the cable is really sensitive to relocate, okay, and in situ foundation should be cast at least 14 days before the frame erection, right? Okay, so uh, we are going to have uh, these things, okay, to uh, prepare, okay, before we can uh, install, okay, the precast uh, components, right? So, bukannya suka-suka je, bila nak install, uh, then kita just bawa je, lepas tu terus pasang, tak? Right, so it has to have a proper site preparation, okay, before the construction or erection process can start, okay? 
Right, so yang ni pula uh, is the appearance of cracks, right? So cracks yang uh, apa dibenarkan, okay, is approximately 3 millimeters wide lah. Right, so this is throughout the construction process, okay, we are going to have uh, the engineers, okay, the QC engineer that has to check, okay, these uh, components, precast components, okay, in order to ensure, okay, that we do not have um, apa, uh, structures, okay, that is subjected to this. Tracking. Okay, right. So nanti boleh baca lah dia punya uh, requirements dia dekat sini. Kalau crack tu lagi besar daripada 3mm, okay and so on. Okay, right. So uh, yang ni pula in terms of uh, the frame stability, right. Okay, so as mentioned earlier, right. Okay, so we are going to uh, also provide okay, the temporary support to our structure. Right, so these are the examples okay, of temporary frame stability. Right, so especially for the um, apa ni, vertical components. Right, so yang atas ni adalah untuk column. Right, so this first one on top here is for columns. Okay, so we can see that we have the supporting uh, elements. Okay, so uh, the props okay, yang dia guna untuk pegang. So usually this uh, for columns, it is to maintain the verticality of our Uh, structure, right? So, dia mesti vertical enough. Uh, so, kita tak nak uh, kita punya column tu, uh, tengok pakai mata kasar je. Uh, then, uh, rupa-rupanya dia tidak, uh, apa ni, betul-betul, uh, <coughs> apa, macam nak kata, betul-betul vertical. Right? Okay, then we also wanted to, uh, for the grout to uh, harden, right? Okay, so therefore we need to uh, apply. Okay, this props, right? Okay, and then this is for walls. Okay, yang kat tepi ni pula untuk walls. Okay, so you can see that we have this props as well. Right, so yang ni adalah slanting ataupun dinal punya props lah. Right, and then these are also props. This is for slabs. Okay, so usually before the uh, apa ni, casting of the topping. Okay, usually we are going to have this props. Right, so the props is not as much as if we are using a cast in situ structure. So kalau cast in situ. Uh, pasal kita pakai uh, plywood, okay, and also we are going to do a cast in situ punya casting or concreting process, right? So therefore support yang dekat bawah tu kena ada sangat banyak, right? So in comparison to if we are dealing with precast concrete structures, so we can actually uh, have a minimal apa numbers of uh, supports, okay, for the uh, <coughs> structure, right? So macam ni pun kita tengok walaupun tak ada support untuk slab tu, okay, but it is very uh, little, right, so very minimal, okay, right, so props, it is custom made or generic, right, so generic ni maksudnya dia general lah, pakai yang sama je untuk any types of structures, okay, so temporary support to precast a concrete element, it provides temporary gravity a load support during the construction, right, so it reduces the self-weight deflection of flooring system, okay, during the topping placement and curing, Okay, and it prevents to torsional instability or rotation of beams loaded along one edge, right? So, yang ni yang uh, saya mentioned earlier, right? So, kita nak avoid any torsion to happen, okay? Pasal during construction, dia bukanlah uh, support yang permanent, okay? But it is a temporary support, okay, that is used during the construction process, right? So, sementara dia nak pasang semua, okay, then kita provide the support, okay, using the props. Okay, then... It provides for an adjustment, okay, it supports temporary construction loads, okay, so prop, uh, props for beams allow for possible changes in the load distribution during the construction process, okay, right, then kita ada braces, right, so braces tu yang mana diagonal, so uh, place diagonally and firmly attached to provide stability and resist lateral loads, it may act in compression and intention, it may have flexible and Uh, connections okay, to adjust to different angles may or may not be adjustable in length. It is required to cope with cyclic loads. Okay, it is not generally used vertically. Right, so kita bukan dia vertical lah uh, untuk braces ni. Biasanya dia, kita akan guna dia diagonal. It is to prevent overturning and resist horizontal movement. Right, so these are the examples okay, of props and also braces. So biasanya props ni yang kita support belah bawah lah. Right, so braces ni adalah yang mana yang diagonal, right, okay, but it is still dua-dua uh, pun props sebenarnya which is considered as the temporary propping, right, okay, so temporary support. Okay, so yang ni pula precast frame erection sequence, banyak lagi ke? Oh, sikit lagi. 
Okay, alright, so precast erection uh, frame sequence. Okay, so yang ni, uh, dia tengok dia punya sequence before we can actually proceed okay, with the next uh, step, right? So stage one, okay, dia buat, the, dia buat foundation, right? So uh, you can see that we have in situ rock to underside of the wedge, right? So this is prepare the foundation for the uh, precast concrete column, right? Okay, so here, okay, when we have uh, installed the column, Okay, so we can see that this column will be supported okay, with this adjustable compression props, right? So, dia pegang kat kiri kanan dia, right? Okay, because we know that we have to wait until this in situ grout to harden first, okay, in order to uh, ensure that it have, in, uh, it have uh, apa ni, the column has enough support, right? Okay, then uh, the second stage, okay, uh, in situ grout to completion, okay, so yang ni dah settle, okay, so the prop will remain, okay, then the first floor beam is fixed and the ends are grouted, right, so tadi column, okay, column dah settle, prop tu masih di situ, okay, then kita akan install pula the first floor beam. <coughs> so, uh, after the first floor beam has already been installed, okay, then the next one will be the floor slab, right, so floor slab pula dia akan letak which is to be supported by the Beam, right, so this is step by step. So they buat foundation dulu, okay, then they buat uh, column, install the column, and then the beams are installed, okay, and then the slab will be installed on top of the beam. Okay, and at this <coughs> stage, okay, the prop still remains, right, so they masih pegang lagi dekat situ, okay, until stage 4, right, okay, whereas uh, this first floor, okay, has already been grouted, Okay, then only we can proceed with the next step, okay, or the next floor, okay. So, with the next floor, okay, we are going to have, <coughs> kita punya column yang dekat atas tu, okay, so, and we are going to have another prop that is put on top, right. So, it will be tied up to the slab on top, right. So, letak dekat atas pula and it will be uh, tied up to our column, right. So, um, then dekat sini, uh, <coughs> apa, no tie, right, so uh, this is for the second floor, okay, bila kita install dia punya beam, right, so the beam will be installed and then the second floor punya step will be installed, okay, and the prop, okay, during this uh, construction process will still remain, okay, <coughs> and then uh, baru dia settle with the second floor, okay, when the second floor punya slab is uh, settled, okay, then only the prop will be removed, right, okay, then baru prop dekat bawah tu kita akan alih, right? Okay, so these are the step by step process, right? Whereas we can see that we have this temporary support, right? Okay, so temporary support tu is during the construction process, okay? So bila uh, as the construction process uh, proceeds, okay, then only dia boleh, kita boleh remove uh, sequentially, okay? Right, so yang ni pula untuk in situ concrete, right, so yang ni additional lah, right, so basically kita akan ada sama ada in situ concrete ataupun grout, okay, especially to protect the connections uh, between the uh, components, right, so it is in, in accordance to BSE. And, okay, normally it is in the permanent shutters, okay, over beams or on temporary form work. Okay, in application of form work, okay, make sure we have sufficient strength inclusive of the operatives, right? So tight fittings, narrow gaps may be filled with foam or fillers. Okay, so it has to be uh, properly prop, right? So yang ni kalau ada lah, is situ concrete yang kita uh, apply, right? So it has to be protected from the weather within uh, a minimum of 12 hours, okay? And we have to do the compressive cube test. Right, okay, so in situ concrete ni, especially for slabs, okay, whereas we are going to have the slab topping, right, so yang tu yang main lah, yang biasanya kita akan ada, right, okay, then we also have concrete screed and joint infill in floors, right, so joint infill in floors ni yang celah-celah dia lah, right, so uh, screed is a non-structural unreinforced loose, uh, which is loose strength, so screed ni adalah dia punya lapis atas, right, so it requires surface preparation, uh, reinforcement bars or mesh should be left. Okay, concrete grade requirements has to be uh, fulfilled and also uh, we are going to look into the longitudinal joint procedures, right? Okay, so yang ni tengok dia punya shear key lah, uh, basically between the slabs, right? So grouting, <coughs> right? So, what's going on? Right, so grouting, we have uh, sand, cement, 
a mix okay, or cement uh, plus with the admixture, right? Whereas the grout has slump of uh, more than 100 millimeters, right? So usually this uh, grout is flowable, right? So we think about pasal grout, which is usually used for uh, connections, right? Okay, so therefore it has to be flowable so that it could pass through uh, tiny areas, right? So we can also use a self-compacting mixture, right? So open vent, okay, not more than one meter. Dry pack grout can be used at soffit or at inclined surfaces. Strength test must be conducted for structural grout, right? So strength uh, must be at least equal to the lesser design strength of the precast component, right? So throughout the precast punya construction uh, apa ni, uh, lecture, kita dah dengar banyak kali lah pasal grout ni. So biasanya kita akan grout okay, especially at the connections. Okay, so this is actually to secure the connection as well as to uh, apa ni, maintain <coughs> the durability of the uh, apa ni, apa? Uh, the connections as well, right? So we do not want any uh, exposure condition okay, to uh, to uh, effect okay, kita punya reinforcement which is in the connection. Alright. <coughs> Allah, yang ni tak ada pula. Saya tak ada pula dia punya video. Alright. So, ah, tak apalah. Yang ni nanti saya bagi uh, apa ni dia punya uh, link to the video. Tak ada pula link kat sini. Saya pun tak letak pula. Ada gambar dia je. Alright. So, tak apalah. Yang ni nanti later saya bagi dekat WhatsApp lah. Okay, the link. Uh, saya pun tak ingat yang ni. Uh, ada yang satu ni is on the precast construction okay, dan kita ada holocore uh, slab installation right so macam mana dia install holocore slab okay then another one ni adalah column and also beam installation okay tak apalah yang ni nanti sekejap lagi saya bagi apa ni dia punya link to the uh, apa ni youtube punya uh, video okay right so any questions settle dah untuk kita punya final topic okay any questions Okay, ada lagi tak orang ni ni? Senyap sunyi dah ni ha? Ada madam. Tak ada, ada we Ah Boleh lah tu. InsyaAllah boleh lah jawab test nanti minggu depan kan. Alright, okay so test minggu depan basically uh, saya brief sikit kita ada uh, we are going to have three questions. Okay, three basic questions. Uh, three main questions. Okay, dan adalah dia punya anak-anak dia kecil-kecil tu kan. Lepas tu, it will not cover what has already been covered in test 1, right? So, apa saja yang masuk dalam test 1, uh, magnet diagram, cable zone profile, so semua yang tu dah tak masuk lah untuk uh, second test, right? Okay, then uh, we are going to have theoretical uh, questions as well, right? So, the theoretical question will be basically from uh, topic 3 and topic 4. So, topic 3 will be joints, uh, apa ni, uh, precast constructions punya concept okay, dan juga joints and connections. Okay, then topic 4 will be uh, what we have already covered today lah. Right, okay, on the general practices and handling of precast concrete components. Okay, right. <coughs> so basically, soalan teori akan jadi daripada situ lah. Right, and then in terms of um, apa, um, Untuk calculation, right? Okay, so we are going to have uh, the calculations that that not that is not included uh, previously, right? Okay, so uh, kita akan ada a bit on uh, under SLS. Okay, then a bit will be, apa? Uh, the rest will be from ULS, right? So daripada ultimate limit state lah, right? So ultimate limit state hari tu yang kita dah belajar kita ada dua. Satu is on the shear resistance, okay, and another one is on. Um, Apa dia satu lagi? Uh, ultimate flexural punya resistance. Right? Okay, so <coughs> basically dia akan uh, masuk either one of this lah. Right? Okay, so on the uh, calculation part. Right? So kena study yang ni properly lah so that you can fully understand. Right? So you are going to have two and a half hours okay, to answer the question. Okay, and the questions okay, will cover uh, 60 marks. Right? Okay, so markah dia total adalah 60 marks. Right, which you have to, uh, which will be converted okay, to 40%. Right, so kita tahu test 2 cover 40%, mini project cover 20% okay, of uh, the uh, balance lah markah yang kita ada. Pasal markah yang hari tu untuk the continuous assessment, so basically kita ada um, uh, 
Hamdeh yang uh, continuous assessment tu kita ada uh, 30 markah daripada test 1 okay, dan kita ada 10 markah daripada quizzes right so kita dah cover dah pun quiz 2 right so dah settle dah untuk that 40% so we have another 60 lah right which is the mini project okay and also we have the um, apa uh, test 2 right so test 2 will be our final assessment lah right okay so nanti insyaAllah saya try korek tengok soalan-soalan yang uh, terdahulu right so I will share with you right so that at least you can have uh, some ideas okay on how the uh, apa ni questions will be okay for this uh, test 2 okay that we are going to have later okay right so kalau tak ada apa-apa soalan rasanya tak ada pun kalau saya tanya pun ada soalan ke tak tu memang tak ada lah kan right so yang ni pun dah kuapa sembilan setengah okay right so any questions okay you can always message me Right, so you can WhatsApp me. Right, so please um, make sure to complete your mini project. Right, okay, and come to meet me. Okay, in order for for me to check okay, your mini project. So you have to present to me. Bukan lah present pun. Dia lebih kepada you show to me your work. Okay, what you have done. Okay, what are uh, the things that you have already covered. Right, okay, so then uh, it will be commented. Okay, and also for uh, any corrections okay, you can make your corrections later on okay, before your final submission okay right so rasanya uh, tak ada question di sini right so kita uh, let's end our class today with us be kifarah and suratul as wal as inna insana fi as illa ladina amanu subhanallah alright Okay, so thank you very much everyone. Nanti kita lagi saya bagi the link to the video. Okay, alright. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, thank madam. You, madam. Alright, welcome.